Cutting greenhouse gas emissions from shipping and ports relies heavily on energy efficiency and low carbon technologies. The GMN project, funded by the European Union and implemented by IMO, is tackling this head on. The project has established a global network of five carefully targeted Regional Maritime Technology Cooperation Centres, or MTCCs. They are helping developing countries make substantial savings by improving their shipping and port operations. This is a global project and it's having an impact in all five regions. Uh, climate change has no borders. Uh, it is a global issue and only globally can be tackled. To get a real feel of exactly how it's making a difference, we visited the Solomon Islands to find out in detail just what impact it's having there. Now, in the shipping and port industries, estimates say that emissions could be reduced by as much as 75% just by doing things a little bit differently and using technologies that already exist. Aranda Kotelawala is the Chief Executive Officer of the Solomon Islands Port Authority. Miranda and his team are working closely with the MTCC Pacific on a whole range of energy saving measures. Hi Aranda. Hi, good to meet you. Actually. Great to meet you too, great to meet you too. So, you're going to show us around the port now, show us some of the things you're doing differently here to try and save fuel, save money and make the whole thing more efficient. Absolutely, actually. Let's, let's take a walk around the port and I'll show you actually what things Let's go. Do I need this? You need this actually. Cool, let's yes. go. Here in the capital, Oniara, MTCC Pacific has helped carry out a full energy audit of the port so they can plan where savings can be made. And one of the most important areas is the lighting. Uh, this is the new 30 metre LED lighting poles we installed. Uh, as a They're replacing all the existing port lights with new, taller and brighter LED lighting powered by solar panels. Perimeter lighting to comply with IMO's port security regulations is also solar powered and they're giving back to the community by powering some of the street lighting too. This shed roof will also be covered with solar panels to provide power for day-to-day -day operations in the port. And of course we simply had to come back to see the lights in action and that means at night. And as you can see, it's pretty impressive. Here in Oniara, the savings actually begin as soon as the trucks enter the port area. Now that truck that's just driven into the port has been through a weighing in motion system. Now weighing the trucks and their containers while they're moving means they don't have to spend time waiting with their engines running for the containers to be weighed. Now that both helps cut down greenhouse gas emissions and it improves air quality in the port. By moving containers around the port with these lightweight trailers, they minimise use of the heavy lift units, which are really fuel thirsty. Even something as simple as repairing cracked and broken road surfaces in the port can make a big difference. Vehicles don't have to rev their engines to get through the ruts and the potholes. Oniara is the main trade port of the Solomon Islands, but there's also a big commercial fishing operation based on one of the other islands. If you eat canned tuna, there's every chance it might have come from here. We're in the port of Noro on the island of New Georgia in the Solomon Islands and I'm going to meet Glenn Joshua who's the energy efficiency manager for the Port Authority to find out how the MTCC project has been helping them here. Hi Lee. Good to meet you. Yeah, pleased to meet you too. So Glenn this is a major tuna port. Um, can you tell us how it works, how all the parts fit together? Yeah, thanks Lee. The fish actually is being caught in Solomon Islands waters and then brought in by ships into the port of Noro and then the fish is discharged from the ships and then put into the containers, into the reefer containers and ready for shipment into Europe and other parts of the world. The reefer containers, they need power obviously, so what do you use to, uh, to generate the power for the reefer containers? Currently we are using conventional power which is fossil fuel. Eventually our, our thoughts are build a one megawatt solar farm here, that will help us save energy and to power these reefer containers. So we've seen some great examples of how the MTCC project is helping the ports in the Solomon Islands to improve their energy efficiency and make savings. But the ship owners want to get in on the act too. Let's go and meet a couple. So Simon, you're participating in the MTCC project by providing fuel consumption data from your ships. Now why is that important? 
Yeah, it is important for me in this part of the world, Solomon Islands, fuel is very expensive. And if I can save money on fuel, then it will be a great advantage for me. So explain how that works. How does providing data actually help you to make savings? Collecting fuel consumption data on board our vessels, and then we supply this uh, fuel consumption data to the MPCC team. And then the team will analyze the data and they will provide us with the technical recommendations on the efficiency and fuel consumption. Okay, that's great. So the project is providing practical assistance to local ship owners here in the Solomon Islands to help them become more energy efficient and save money. The local ship owners also recognise the environmental gains. This is Joy and she heads a family business running one of the largest inter-island trading vessels. MTCC has given us a new learning opportunity, a new learning curve to uh, manage our operation efficiently and also to look after the environment that we serve in. There's a clear link between energy efficiency and addressing climate change. Basically, the more energy efficient you are, the less fuel you burn, and that means your greenhouse gas emissions are reduced. In the Solomon Islands, we saw for ourselves exactly how the GMN project is really helping to improve energy efficiency there. But that's just one example. It's the same story throughout the entire GMN network. MTCC Caribbean, for example, is coordinating regional efforts in two pilot projects, one to establish a baseline and cost-benefit analysis for different energy efficiency technologies, and the other a system for collecting fuel consumption data. There's a similar focus at MTCC Latin America. They've organised several workshops throughout the entire region for maritime authorities and others. MTCC Asia is developing a software tool to help ships' crews record fuel consumption and working on ways of optimising the angle at which ships float in the water, known as trim, to improve their performance. And in Africa, the project has developed standardised e-forms for tablets, enabling ships' crews to input key consumption parameters to be processed and analysed. World leaders, including UN Secretary-General Antonio Guterres, have identified climate change as the defining issue of our time. The GMN project is one example of how a collaborative global initiative can translate into local action and make a real difference. <laughs>